Greetings, fellow Earthlings. AGK here with a little, well, not really little, it's going to be kind of a lengthy one, but a little IC2 API video tutorial type thingy. Uh, we are basically going to be making this block. What is this block, you may ask? Well, it officially is an iEnergy sink. And I will be going through what that kind of stuff is in a few moments. But basically, in this tutorial, I will be doing others in the future, but in this tutorial, we are going to be making a machine. Uh, this is probably one of the most requested tutorials I have ever gotten. And when I say that, I mean like three people ask. But yeah, the most requested video I've gotten so far. And um, basically, we not we're not adding a GUI or anything like that kind of stuff in this episode because that takes a long, long time. We're just going to make it so when we click on it, it tells you it tells us how much energy is inside of it and when we shift click it will remove everything obviously there's nothing in it right now so it didn't remove anything but it will remove just for testing purposes right now the bat box has absolutely nothing in it and well, first of all as you can tell here um, the glass fiber cables connect to it so it is working and let's test it out the generator has no energy as well Let's put some coal in here, and I am being shot at. Just a second. Should have done that earlier. Here we go. Um, as you can see, the bat box is filling up and quickly draining out, and it is all going into our magnificent. And I just deleted it. I shift. Okay, there we go. So it's adding energy, as you can see. Uh, <laughs> pardon my derps there. And a voice crack. Today is just not my day, I guess. So it burnt through all that coal, all that, and it's gone into here. That's pretty much it for what we're going to do. Now I'm going to cut the scene, delete all the code here, and we're going to do this completely from scratch. See ya in like five milliseconds for you. Probably like half an hour for me. So yeah, be right back. And I am back. So I have gone out and cleaned out all of my code I have done with my testing stuff because I wanted to show you that world before I did it. So it's all cleaned up. We're starting from a blank slate, kind of. I have a few of my mods still, or tutorials in here, like electric food, that kind of stuff. But um, just for you people that are not exactly following along or just doing this yourself and you want to see, you just want to follow along with me as I am right now, um, I have provided a download for you. Just go to my website, which is agkz.me slash downloads. Downloads slash basic machine machine and it's right there but underscore capital S T A R T start T S T A R T don't know why I couldn't spell start there dot zip huh. link will be in the description obviously because it, if it's hard for me to type this then well it's not gonna be very easy for you really oh capital I already told capital capital S there we go. So now it's downloaded, and you can open this, and I have all the source code. I also have um, generic textures, blocks. Oh, ignore these. Those are for your future, future thing. Uh, the dummy block we're doing, and GUI, this is just kind of my, I did an item, a dummy item GUI test, and the GUI is in there. Again, I just did what I have right now, and um, yes, all the source code is in the tutorial generic and yeah this is all it right here <laughs> so if you want to follow along with me this is the you are no it's a capital S right there uh, link will be in the description and um, yeah also feel free to join my uh, blog I post tutorials and all my videos go there enough of self advertising let's get to the code um, first, what we're going to want to do is obviously make our block. So here we're going to do public, final, static, block, and a dummy block, I think is what I called it. New dummy, yeah, capital, dummy block. And oh, we're just going to do a test ID, or a block ID of 500. It's a pretty generic for it. I would not recommend if you're going to release your mod to be 500 because that is a very commonly used one. <sighs> a lot of typing, or a lot of talking. It's a problem with my job. Okay. And our material is going to be rock. 
just because. And there we go. That should be all we need for this part. Save and let's make our new class, Dummy Block. Looks good, looks good, finish. Now we have our Dummy Block, Extends Block. We are actually going to change this to Extend a Block Container and eh, Import. Or if you could do a uh, Command Shift O if you were in Mac or that organizes stuff and fixes your imports and all that stuff. We're going to add our constructor, change this to ID and this to material. Just makes it look nicer and less like generic, I guess you could say. I don't know. It's just easier to think about Command D to get rid of the entire line. And there we go for that. Um, we are actually going to do our block setup stuff here. Set creative tab. Uh, I realize I'm talking pretty fast. I want to go fast through this tutorial because I do not want it to be a half an hour long tutorial. Um, but I, I understand it's kind of hard for people that English is not their generic or their native language. It's kind of hard to understand, but I am sorry. Hardness. Uh, let's just make this 3.0F. This is pretty generic. This is kind of, yeah, just generic. So far what we've done is set the creative tab. This should be pretty self-explanatory for you, um, especially if you are making a IC2 API mod on lo come on, localized name. There we go. We're just going to call it dummy block. Perfect. Save, and that should be all we need for this part so far. Um, what's, what's wrong? Oh yes, uh, Control Shift D, and the create, the one that says create tile, uh, create new tile entity. We want that to return null, and it's going to be a different one that we want to use later on. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what we need for this part right now. We are going to actually go at over override. I take that back about being over. We are. Still have a little bit to go. Public tile entity, and we are create creating a not creating create tile entity, not the new tile entity. We're doing tile entity. Uh, the only reason is that because world has meta or int meta, and this is just like the forge version. I don't know. It's it's just the one that you should use. <laughs> And we're going to return a new tile entity dummy block. And obviously we have not made this yet, so it's going to give us an error. We're going to create this class and move on to our tile entity. Leave this as it is right now. In our tile entity, this is the part that actually makes it a IC2 network thing. Um, when I say network thing, I mean what type of energy net it is. If we go into IC2 API energy, under the usage, it tells us the three different types of energy network blocks. First, there is the energy sources, and I'm kind of reading this off and not, so I recommend reading through this entire usage.txt file before doing any API integration for your mod. First of all, I'll just kind of summarize it up a little bit. Energy sources is the source to the power. It's the generators, the or as it says right here, the output side of the storage block or the transformer. Uh, energy sinks, which are the machines, which are what we're doing right now, or the input part. This is the stuff that's taking in the energy. And then conductors or cables. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, some other notes. Uh, all the, the 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 energy generation, distribution, and consumption is limited to the stim simulating or the server side. So all your logic should be done on the server side so people don't have cl hacked clients and change the numbers to get free energy. That would be bad. Um, you can get source code for how to do that and all this different stuff here. I recommend reading through all this. Um, it will help you a lot. But the thing we really need to worry about is this part right here. And there's a few events that we need to push, but I will show you that right now. Uh, save this because that little asterisk there annoys me. Uh -huh. And we here we're going to implement. Again, I'm sorry, I'm talking really fast, but 
Uh, what you gonna do? Uh, implements, and we're gonna implement I energy sync. So whatever version you are using. So if your block is a uh, energy source, like a generator, you change this to I energy source. And I will be doing tutorials on energy source and conductor in the near future. But as of right now, during this tutorial, we are doing I energy sync, aka machine. <sighs> Deep breaths. Okay. A lot, a lot to talk about. This is a pretty big file. Uh, we will be typing a lot here. And first of all, let's make a few um, just kind of generic tile entity stuff. Uh, we're going to make a double, a public double of energy. And we're just going to call it 0, 0.0d. D for energy. Or double. Um, that's that. Public double max energy is uh, max energy and that is going to be equal to oh let's do 10,000 remember make sure it's in double perfect so that's that part what are you going to mad about oh yeah there's a few methods that the implements does that we're not going to quite add yet um, and for the load and unload methods that's kind of complicated but right now we're just going to do this just kind of follow along we're going to do boolean Initialized. Initialized. <laughs> Initial initialized. There we go. And this is just a Boolean which will tell us if it's loaded on the network, the, the energy network, or energy net, uh, if it's loaded or not. And it just it'll tell us if we need to update it or all that kind of stuff. So first of all, we're gonna do a public void read from MBT. NBT tag compound pound here we go NBT there we go I'm just gonna do that I know you're supposed to do like NBT tag I, they're my variables I can change them how I want so I don't have to type so much <laughs> and we're just gonna do our super read from NBT honestly if you are going through this step right now and you have no idea what I'm talking about I would recommend researching tile entities as that will be very helpful for you when you make your machine okay that was out of habit I will do it the right way there we go <laughs> if and I'm just gonna copy this again because I don't want to type it again it's just an mbt tag dot compound has the key no, wait, what's wrong what I do I don't know why this is not working, but oh, seems to be working now. Okay. <laughs> so if the MBT came about has the key energy compound has the key energy, then we are going to make this dot energy MBT tag compound dot get double. Ah, really, You're not going to do that one either. Okay, get double. And energy. Okay, there we go. That is pretty much it for the read from MBT. Let me explain this now. Oh, that's why I. Oh. Aha! MBT. There we go. Now that should all work. Command Shift O or Command Yeah Command Shift O to import it all. And there we go. So from this read from MBT, we are reading the MBT for this tile entity. Again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'd recommend researching tile entities. <sighs> now, the first thing we always have to do for tile entities is read from tile or MBT. Now, that's just kind of a generic thing we have to do. Now we're testing if this MBT compound has the key energy stored in it, then set the double that's stored in here as energy, our energy up here. And that's pretty much what we need to do for the read from MBT. Now we're going to do the same, just about the same thing. So I'm just going to copy and paste this and call this write from MBT. Or write to MBT. My bad. Two. There we go. And um, we're changing, what are we changing? This to write to. And this we're changing it completely. Oh. 
Not completely, actually, but there we go. We're setting the double, and we're just going to call it energy. So this, this is the key energy. It's a double, and our double is going to be this dot energy. There we go. This should be pretty self-explanatory. You're just kind of making a, a variable. You're, you're reading it, and you're writing it. Just kind of, yeah. Now we're going to do a little um, at override public void update entity. So pretty much, I, I believe, let's see if it has a thing in here. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty much every tick this gets pushed. And it'll just kind of update the entity. <laughs> Initialized. There we go. I'll explain this in just a second, but I want to type it. World object dot not, not null. Okay, so here, if the world is not null, like it's in a world, and um, it is not initialized, which we've set here, and it, it, it probably should set no, we'll set that there, and it is not initialized, then we want to initialize it. And how are we going to do that? We are going to do if we're going to actually check if the, if it's client side because we want to do this just on the client side is remote. So if it's not remote, so if it is client side, like I just said, we are going to do energy tile load event load event. Now this is part of the IC2 modding or IC2 I API energy tile load event this. We're just going to load this tile entity. Minecraft Forge. If you don't know about events, basically Minecraft Forge allows us to post and get events for our events. They basically let us run code after other things have loaded or changed. Now this, just importing this, it's from the IC2 API, so that should be all we need to do for this part. Now after it's initialized, so yeah, after we've done this, we want to do initialized equals true. Perfect. That's all we're going to do for the update entity. The update entity. <sighs> Man, this is a long tutorial. Okay. Override public void invalidated. Nope, not a, it, it, there. Invalidate. Now basically, this is kind of a tile entity thing where uh, invalid, it, it's when a tile entity is kind of removed or unloaded or any of that kind of stuff, it's invalidated. So we're actually going to do the same here, change a little thing, and this is going to be, there we go, unload event, change it to unload event, and this is going to be entity tile unload event. There we go, an entity tile unload event. Command shift O, import it, and there we go. That should be what we need for the unvalidated or invalidated. Save and there should be no error. There is. Let's import the unimplemented methods. Let's import the unimplemented methods. There we go. So it's these four right here that get imported. This is basically telling IC2 what to do with our block. I guess. Um, first of all, let's start at the top. Accepts energy from the emitter. This will be the tile en entity that has the energy that's giving it to us and the forge direction. And you should know what forge direction is. Let's get rid of these auto-generated auto stuff. They're kind of pointless. And there we go. For our machine, we want it to be imported, be able to accept energy from any side. So we're just going to do true. If you were doing one of those MFSUs or uh, trend or what are those? Um, oh, I can't think of it now. It changes the energy. Basically, if it's the thing that it both imports and exports energy, then you want to have like, oh, the direction is, I don't know. Um, you just make sure that the direction that it's coming from is on the side that you want it to be. And yeah, I'll, I'll be doing a tutorial on this to kind of elaborate more on this, but as of right now, we're doing a machine, so 
it can accept it from any side. So we're just going to return true. That took way too long to ex explain. And now for the demanded energy units, we're going to do uh, return this dot max energy. So how much energy we can total. So this 10,000 minus this dot energy. We're just kind of getting how much energy can be taken. The, the demanded energy units. How much energy we can store still. I guess. <laughs> um, that's, yeah, that's it for that. Now we're going to move on. This is the kind of the logic. This is when this this gets ran when IC2 tries putting energy EU into our machine. This kind of gets complex. So I hope you guys know math cuz I hope you know math cuz yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to write it out first and then explain it cuz I don't want to keep talking and I'll just babble about stuff that is pointless. Okay, so for this first line, we're saying if the energy is greater than or equal to the max energy. So if we have more energy in it than we can store, then just return the full amount. So don't don't add any new energy. It's just kind of a, hi, we'll take your energy. Just kidding, keep it to yourself. This method, it will send the energy, and you return, the double your return, is how much energy is to be returned back to the source, or to be denied. Uh, yeah. So now we're going to do a double of how much open energy we have. We're just going to call it open energy. It's equal to this dot max energy minus this dot energy. There we go. So this is just kind of how much energy is open in our machine. If open energy is greater than or equal to the amount Again, I will explain this in just a second, but this dot ener come on. energy plus amount. Turn 0 0.0 D. Okay, explaining this one now. If the how much energy we have open is more than the amount, so we have extra energy, so if the amount is like 5 and we have 10 open, then do this. So if there's room for the, the amount, and I wrote that wrong there, if there's room for the amount, then just add the amount to the energy. And this plus is equal to, that just basically, the first, add this. It's just kind of a, a forge shortcut, or not a forge, a Java shortcut. Um, so yeah, now we're also going to do a else if, and if you think you can streamline this and make it a little better, then by all means do it. This is just kind of managing your energy so you can do whatever you want with it. So if the amount is larger than how much open energy is there, so if there's if they're trying to stuff in more energy than we have room for, then do this. This dot dot energy add open energy. Okay, and one more return amount minus open ener energy. Okay, this time, since we know that open energy is less than the amount, the amount is more greater than open energy, they're kind of, they're flipped. It's probably could do it the other way, but it doesn't matter. We know that the open energy is bigger than, or the amount is bigger than open energy. That means to fill it up, we're going to be filling up the entire thing. We're just going to fill out the Fill it. We're basically going to be filling up the energy. Um, you could also do equals this dot max energy, but it's the same thing. Actually, equals this dot max energy is probably better. We're just kind of filling it all the way up. And so whatever amount that, again, I did equals. Yeah, there we go. Okay, this is the code you want. <laughs> So if the open energy is greater or er, less than the amount, I'm going to stop explaining this. I obviously can't explain this. Uh, just look it over. Test and put some variables in there. Test it. You'll see that this works. It's basically whatever energy is extra, it's returning. That is 
taking way too long for me to explain. Save, and that should be just about as much. So now, now get max save input. This is basically the tier, and we just want it to be 512. It can be 32 if you want low voltage, 128 if you want medium. Um, actually, the experimental has changed a lot. Um, I don't know what the new ones are, but this is how much is safe to import. Yeah. That's it for our tile entity dummy block. My god, that took way too long. <laughs> um, we have a few things we need to put in our generic. We need to uh, pre in it. Here we go. We are going to do game registry dot, reg dot register block and this dummy block. No, nope, stop block. This is our string ID, so we're just going to call it dummy block. That should work. There we go. Game registry dot register. No, is it register? Yeah, tile entity. Register ti tile entity. There we go. And our tile entity will be tile entity dummy block dot class. And then our ID will be dummy block tile entity. You can name that pretty much whatever you want. It's just kind of the ID for your tile entity. Uh, we are going to add a language registry registry dot add name dummy block and we're just going to call it dummy block. There we go. Congratulations, you have made it to the end of the tutorial. Let's test it. I apologize for how long that took. Let's go into our, our IC2 API tutorial and the change, so that's that. And I forgot to do something. Yes, I did. My bad. Dummy block. We need to do um, right here at over ride at side only side not nine. Client. Ah. Oh, oh. Okay, I'm obviously getting tired. <laughs> okay. But look, you know, this is a very generic thing. All we're doing is adding a, a texture, so I'm copying it in. <laughs> we're just registering the icon. Register icons. It's a very generic thing. You should know how to do this. <laughs> and if I am not mistaken, this should be what we need. Um we want to add over. I'm just going to do a little typing here, and I will be quiet. I don't know what these pars are. They're like sides and stuff like that. Uh, sorry, my notes are out of the way. <laughs> Gotta fix this. There we go. You don't expect me to remember all this stuff, don't you? Float par 8 and float par 9. Command Shift O, import. Please have a green arrow. What is the wrong? Oh, we have to return. And we're just going to return true. Is this working? It is green arrow. That means we're overriding. Perfect. Okay. Let's get into it now. Now, first of all, if the world dot is remote, return true. This just kind of makes sure we're only on client side. We're only going to broadcast it once, not twice. Entity, dummy, block, tile entity, tile 
entity dummy block block dot er, no nope. world dot get lock tile entity for x for y and for z <sighs> okay now if the tile entity is not null so it exists if player that is sneaking, ignore the motorcycle if you can hear that. <laughs> then te dot n. So if the player is sneaking, let's well, set it te dot energy is equal to zero or point zero d. There. Okay. So we're not done yet. <laughs> I got a little excited there. Player dot add chat message we're just kinda we're gonna broadcast to the chat current energy is equal to plus te dot energy there we go and this is also how you would explain or show uh, energy in a GUI or any of that stuff this is how you're gonna get that energy from other areas yes um, I'd also recommend um, well, not recommend. This is kind of where you, when when you um, when we add a GUI or if we add a GUI or whatever that is, this is the line where you're going to add that uh, player that open GUI thing. Yes. So here we go. This should, and I say should with air quotes, should be what we need now. Uh, block content. Yep. Let's test it. Oh, I've managed to get over 30 minutes now. Well, a little while ago, but yeah. Here we go. Uh, please don't do this. Please just be a block update. There we go. Yeah, it is. Just needed a block update. There we go. Okay. Um, change into creative. You don't need that. Okay. So our bat box, which I'm going to empty, this should be empty, and this should also be empty. No, it isn't. Shift click. Remember, we we added that. Shift click to remove. So, yeah. It's not even now. There we go. Okay. So, here we go. This is the block that we just added. The yeah. This is all your hard work. Congratulations, Internet. You now have... It's going to add... So we're adding a bunch of energy here. And you can see it is filling up energy. Congratulations. Silent clap for you. You have won. That is about it for this tutorial. I apologize for the length, but machines are a pretty complex thing. Um, that's about it. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, well, obviously no one liked this, but because it's so long and I am not good at speaking, but if this helped you at all, um, please, uh, what is the thing on YouTube that's the up arrow thing? Uh, the, uh, please like it. I could not think of it. It's obviously too late for me to function right now. I'm going to shut up while I'm ahead. Please like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to tweet to me. It's me, AGKZ, um, obviously in the description. Uh, if anything changes in the tutorial from the future, like new versions of the API or that kind of stuff, make sure annotations is turned on as I will show you either the code difference or a link to the new video. Also check the description if you're on mobile devices. And I think that's enough for me today. Have a nice day.